Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Bustles YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I have a very grievous message to present to you, my sisters, and uh, verily, it's a necessary message, but it's not an easy one. Yesterday, September 11th, 2019, there was an incident widely reported in the media, places like CNN and so forth, reported that um, the headline was something like a, a Christian pastor um, who is an advocate for mental health awareness committed suicide. Now, I'm going to speak about this from the Holy Word of God for the benefit of the living. And in order to address this properly, I'm, I'm going to have to speak of some of the things that this man said and um, some of the things that were said by those around him. And it, it's not something that I enjoy doing. I'm not doing it to, to slander anyone or to speak ill of the dead or anything like that. But verily, uh, this was a man who represented himself to the world as a, a Christian pastor. So he was looked up to as a shepherd and many people have admired him. And in the media, his views are being, and the, the people speaking about his death are being represented as Christian views. And for that reason, I feel it necessary to address it publicly so that at least there is an answer out there from the word of God about the truth about these matters. So the first thing I want to begin with is of course the obvious question, what happens to a Christian or to a Christian pastor who commits suicide? Well, the answer to that is very easy. It's very simple and very clear that the same thing happens to them that happens to anyone who commits suicide. Anyone who kills themselves is guilty of murder and because it's murder of the self, but it's still murder. It's acting in a godlike way. It's saying that I am the judge of how difficult my life is and that therefore I am going to decide how and when I die. And those are not things for any human being to decide about someone else or about themselves, you see. So the, the sin of murder is something that is clearly forbidden in the Bible. And I think that we can agree about that. Even those of you who are not Christians can agree that the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. And it makes no difference if you're the person that you're killing is yourself. It makes no difference before God. So someone who commits suicide goes to hell. And this is true of Christians. It's true of people who think they're Christians, but really do not know Jesus Christ or the way of salvation. And it is certainly true also of people who think themselves to be a Christian pastor in the false church. And the reason I say that, that um, this man who killed himself was a pastor in the false church is it's very evident that he was. I'm not familiar. I don't know anything about the church he was in or, or what they teach, but I can see from the very little that I've observed here that he wasn't a Christian because he was telling people and he was teaching people that, that Jesus Christ can't help people who are suffering from depression or PTSD or anxiety or suicidal thoughts. And this is a lie. And no Christian church, no true Christian church would ever allow someone to pretend to be a shepherd of the flock and teach such a damnable heresy. Now, I know that I've used some strong words here, but this is verily the truth. So I want to just share with you some of the things that this man said and um, so some of the things that um, his wife said. 
after his death. So it's just going to take a minute to call this up on my phone here. So I'm going to read you the headline from CNN. It says, Pastor who is known for work and mental health advocacy kills himself. And he was um, a pastor at a Southern California mega church, and he has died by suicide. So he founded an outreach called Anthem of Hope designed to help people dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts. Well, I think it's pretty clearly evidenced here that uh, whatever this Anthem of Hope was, it wasn't about the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ uh, is not the Jesus Christ these people are teaching. And I'm going to read for, for you uh, from something that this man wrote in a post on Monday. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure suicidal thoughts. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure depression. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure PTSD. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure anxiety, but that doesn't mean Jesus doesn't offer us companionship and comfort. He always does that. Now, I'm going to pause here and just discuss, discuss this statement. People who love Jesus Christ do what he says. So Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I want to turn now. Let's go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, and let's read verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So when a person loves Jesus Christ, they do what he says. And there are some things that we can see were ignored by this so-called Christian pastor. And the, it, it's obvious that he was not adhering to the commandment, thou shalt not kill. People who suffer from suicidality, from depression, from PTSD, from anxiety, all these mental health disorders. If you're attending a false church, they will tell you exactly what this man was telling people, is that Jesus can't help you with that. And that to go to the doctors, to go uh, to the mental health people. So he was prescribing as a pastor from the pulpit, mental health advocacy. He did an outreach for that mega church that was to help people suffering from these things but it, it's the idea that you can't rely on jesus christ to heal you that instead what you need is kind of a blend so you need mental health treatment and then you can cry on jesus's shoulder if you want so that's what he's basically saying that jesus can't save you from those things but he's there for you to cry on his shoulder if, if you want. So he's there as a companion. Well, my Jesus Christ and the Jesus Christ of Scripture and the Jesus Christ of all Christians is the Savior of the world. And he, he healed us when he died for us. So let's read of this. I want to go to First Peter chapter 2. And let's read of the true Jesus Christ of Scripture. Let's begin at verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called. So this is speaking to Christians. Christians were called unto this. Because, Jesus, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. So Christian follows in the steps of Jesus Christ, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So Jesus Christ was not a sinner. And those who are saved aren't sinners either. The way of salvation is something that this man, very sadly, probably never knew. 
even though he was a pastor in a megachurch. See, the way of salvation is to first recognize that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, came into the world to redeem mankind from their sins. And he lived a sinless life. And then he laid down his innocent life and his righteous blood willingly and died even though he didn't deserve it. And then he was resurrected into eternal glory by the Holy Spirit of his Father, the one true God. This is clearly written in the scripture. And if you have questions about what I just said, feel free to email me because I can show you from the scripture that everything I just said is true, but it's not the topic of this particular video. But there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Any scripture that I reference in this video will be in the description box below. So I just quoted a scripture from the King James Version of the Holy Bible, which is the word of God, if you speak English. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So when Jesus died on the cross, he paid our debt for us. And when we obey his gospel, we are saved from our sins. And the means of salvation is this, to repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is written in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. This is how a person becomes a Christian. It's how we enter into covenant with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. And why this is relevant is that if people are struggling with anxiety and depression and mental health problems and, and suicidality, it's because they feel convicted of their sin and have not yet been saved from their sin. Because when you're saved from your sin, all of that is washed off of you and you are not that person anymore. You are transformed then into someone who has a choice about sin. Jesus Christ referred to his father as the only true God. Let's read on here. In First Peter chapter 2, and now let's read in verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, so Jesus Christ, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committeth himself to him that judges right, righteously. You see, someone who is consumed with thoughts about killing themselves is not committing themselves to God. Instead, they are taking judgment into their own hands. And they're saying something like, and I, I can say this because I'm someone who struggled with suicide for many years. So, so believe me, I am not unsympathetic about this. But there is a way out, and that's the purpose of this video. Someone who's thinking, my life is just too hard, and there's no answer to my suffering. It's hopeless. It's good for nothing. Why continue? And the person who's thinking that, who then takes their own life, is not committing themselves to God. The thoughts of a person who is committing themselves to God are something like, this is really difficult. Father, help me. Father, give me the strength to overcome this difficulty. Father, remove from me any bitterness, any unforgiveness, any sorrow, any spirit of darkness. Father, show me your mercy and your truth. Guide me in the way everlasting. Those are the thoughts and prayers of someone who is committing themselves to God, who judges righteously. They don't take judgment into their own hands. So let's read in verse 24, who bit his own self, 
bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. You see, a Christian has been saved from their sins. That's what it means to have your sins remitted. It means they're taken away from you and they're not on you anymore. Then you can live in righteousness. So being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. When we lo live unto righteousness, we're not thinking about how tough we have it. We're spending our time preaching the gospel to people the good news of the kingdom and the way that we were saved from our sins. And verily, anyone who is standing in authority in some megachurch telling people that the answer is to have more mental health advocacy in the church is blind and, and leading the blind. There is hope, though. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And that's what I really want to talk about. But first, let's read what this woman said about her husband. I am reading here from a post that this man's wife uh, made shortly after his death. She wrote, suicide, I'm quoting here, suicide doesn't get the last word. Well, sadly, if you kill yourself, you're done. Your life is done, and now you will be judged on what you decided to do. And suicide is a sin that cannot be repented of. You see, God will forgive us if we come to him in repentance and seek Jesus Christ. If we seek salvation in Jesus Christ, if we have not yet been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we can repent of our sins and come to the waters of salvation. This is to be baptized in Jesus' name. If someone is a Christian and has been baptized in Jesus' name, then they can go to the throne of grace and ask God to forgive them their sin in Jesus' name. They can say, I sinned, I repent of it, and Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. This is written in 1 John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But what I would say is that Someone who has killed themselves can't repent because they're dead. So it is kind of the last word. And believe me, it's a, trust me, it's a very um, dangerous last word in the lives of other people. Children who have a parent who committed suicide are much more likely to kill themselves. People who are married to someone who committed suicide is much more likely to kill themselves. As a matter of fact, death education courses in high schools cause more suicide. This kind of thing it is, um, it's an industry of death that has now infiltrated into the buildings that call themselves Christian churches. And the, this doctrine that Jesus can't save people from sorrow and pain and, and despair is false. This is a, a lie, and it's a deadly lie. Many, many people are going to look at the example of this man, and they're going to think, oh, if I kill myself, I go home to be with Jesus. And this is why I, I'm going to read what she says here, because this is the reason for this video, really. She writes, you are an anthem of hope to everyone, and I will do my best to continue your leg legacy of love until my last breath, she wrote. Then she wrote, my loving, giving, kind-hearted, encouraging, handsome, hilarious, give the shirt off his back husband, went to be with Jesus late last night. No, my friend, I'm very sorry that this has happened, but no, your husband did not go home to be with Jesus. He's guilty of murder, and he didn't repent of that because he died in that state. If you die in your sins, you don't go to heaven. And I know your false church, church tells you otherwise, but this is not hope. This is not hope. 
And what you're telling people, you're telling other people, not only is your own husband now dead, but now you're telling other people that if they're suffering the way he did, that he they can go home to be with Jesus too. She writes, no more pain, no more struggle. You are made complete and you are finally free. No, no, my friend, no one is made complete by killing themselves. And it is not a way to become free of the pain. It will ensure that your pain never, ever ends. Because to kill someone is murder and murderers do not inherit the kingdom of God. This is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. It's also, you know, it's also written in other places in the scriptures, such as in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Then she writes, suicide and depression fed you the worst lies, but you knew the truth of Jesus. And now I know you're by his side right this very second. And this is a lie from the pit of hell. This man most likely did not know the truth about Jesus because if he did, he would have seen the way of salvation. He would have seen, oh, I can have all this shame and guilt and pain and sorrow and depression and, and anxiety washed off of me by being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins. That's the truth of Jesus. And because he killed himself, I, I can verily say unto you, it's very unlikely he ever heard the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And to say, my friend, to say, I know you're by his side right this very second, is to entice many other suffering people to go to hell too. And I, I must, I must ask you, my friend, please repent of this. This is a very grievous grievous thing. This man had not only a wife, but, but children. And it, it's a, a very sad, sad thing. I know what it is, it is to survive a, a close family member committing suicide. It cuts you right down the middle of your heart in a place that, that feels like you're just going to bleed to death. That hurts so badly. Another thing that happens is that you blame yourself. People who kill themselves are not being loving and kind. They're not being a good husband, a good father, a good wife, or a good mother. They're being selfish. Because when you do that, your children, those around you, have ha, are now tempted to follow you. And that's what my real concern is for this wife, because she is now vowing to, to proclaim this false hope to people that killed her husband, this false hope that killed her husband. She's going to carry on now in the ministry that he was in, this ministry of death. I wanted to warn people about this because verily there is a way. I suffered for many years with depression, PTSD, trauma, anxiety, um, all kinds of things like that. And I can testify that the psychiatric system, the medical system, the psychological system, the false religious system doesn't have the answer. The only place that you can find freedom from these things is to have your sins remitted by being baptized in the name of the Lord. You see? There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Jesus said that a man must be born of water and spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven. People who think that, that all you have to do is believe and that, that Jesus understands your sin and that he's there to kind of hold your hand and let you cry on his shoulder while he loves you, while you yet wallow around in your iniquity. People who tell you that don't know Jesus Christ. If you're hearing this message and it, it, it's speaking to you, please email me. My email is always in the description box below. I want to read now um, 
one more passage from the scripture. Let's go to Mark, book of Mark, chapter 16, pardon me, and verse, let's read verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. These are the words of Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. If you're sick, if you have a devil in you, you know, if you have a, a, a an evil spirit that's tormenting you, an evil spirit of suicidal thoughts, of depression, of bitterness, of anger, of unforgiveness, of torment, if you have an evil spirit plaguing you, you can come to Jesus Christ and be delivered from that. And you don't need some deliverance ministry. You need to have your sins remitted in the waters of baptism. And I can testify of this because I struggled with all of these things. And verily, I almost died more than once. And yet Jesus Christ saw fit to, to pluck me out of, out of the, the snare that I was in and give me the truth of Jesus Christ, which is that he is the savior of the world. And by his stripes, we are healed. So let's go again now to First Peter and read this again. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, so we can die to our sins. We don't have to walk around in condemnation anymore. We being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. The cure for depression, for PTSD, for suicidal thoughts, for anxiety, for anything, any mental health problem, the, the solution to that is Jesus Christ. And this man had been lied to. He was in a false church believing in another Jesus, not the only begotten Son of God, but a false God from Babylon known as God the Son, who is no God. It's a, it's a fallen angel. It's a devil. He believed in the wrong Jesus, and he didn't know the way of salvation. And for that reason, he was tricked into signing up for an eternal hell. And now those around him are using his death as an example of hope to people. This is a very grievous thing, and, and I really had to answer it because this, this is not a way of hope, it's the way to hell. And if you kill yourself, you will not go home to be with Jesus. And, and people can tell you that, but it isn't so. The final thing I want to say is that in these false churches, they tell people that a Christian can take psychiatric medication and go talk to a psychiatrist. They can go to a medical doctor and take all kinds of prescriptions for various diseases. But in the Bible, the Greek word that is translated as sorcery in the Bible is pharmakia. Pharmaceutical drugs are sorcery. And those who partake of sorcery will not enter the kingdom of God. Let's go to Revelation 21, 8, just to read this to you so you know I'm not making it up. So, um, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We notice here this that murderers are included here, unbelieving, those who are sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Someone who thinks their own pain is so important that they have a right 
to take their own life as being selfish. That is self-idolatry. It's saying how I feel is more important than the souls of my family, the souls of my children, and that those who are left behind me, who, who looked up to me, who loved me, now are much more likely to also die by suicide. This is not kind, it's not loving, and it certainly is not Christian. May the word of God go forth today. And really, what I would say to you is there is hope. If you're struggling with these things, there is hope. And I'm a living testimony of that. You don't have to continue to struggle with these feelings and thoughts anymore. You can be saved in Jesus Christ just as I was. You can have the blessing of walking in the righteousness of Jesus Christ and be dead to your past and now live for the kingdom of God. Is this an easy way? Is it a popular way? Well, it's easier than walking around in, in suicidality and, and depression, but it's not easy and that you, you can't continue maybe to um, do things that are sinful. What I would say about people who are suicidal, because I was one, is that sin causes suicidality. It's guilt. It's shame. It's not knowing the way and feeling hopeless. That's what causes people to feel suicidal. And the way to not feel suicidal is to have your sins remitted in the name of Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name receiving the Holy Spirit of the living God to dwell inside of you so that thereafter you can live for righteousness and truth. May the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' name, amen.